Welcome to lecture 16, the divergence and integral tests. So for an overview, recall the divergence test. If the sequence of the terms in a series does not go to zero, then the series must diverge. So this, so in other words, if, if the ANs do not go to zero, then the series diverges. So it's important to realize that the converse, the backwards direction, fails. That is, just because a series diverges does not mean that the terms do not go to zero. Said differently, there are series out there whose terms approach zero, but the series itself still diverges. Um, and the classic example of this is the harmonic series. So obviously, the limit of this sequence goes to zero, as n goes to infinity, but the series diverges. And you saw this last semester, or not last semester, last lecture. Um, we didn't have the tools to know how to prove this. So that's what we're going to do now. We know this due to the integral test. The integral test says that suppose we have a continuous positive decreasing function. Well, it's not doesn't have to be decreasing everywhere. It just has to be decreasing um, for all x greater than some integer, positive integer. So this means eventually it is decreasing. So for example, we have a function like this. I, I don't care what it does initially, but at some point it has to be decreasing. So this is this would be f of x. Oh, and and you know I'm I'm I have a series here, but I didn't tell you what the series is. So let, let, I'm actually missing something. Let me put it back in here. Um, a n is f of n. Yeah, that's, that's necessary. Then the series of the ANs converge if and only if the integral converges. So hopefully this is believable. What this is saying is that we have at these integral points that the, the sum of these heights converges if and only if the area under the curve is finite. And to give you an idea for why this is, is because if you... You can, I'll show this more in the next slide, but essentially you can approximate the area under the curve by boxes whose total, um, whose width is 1 and whose height is, is a n. Okay, now I'm going to give you a more complete reason as to why the integral test works. So, so suppose f of x is a continuous positive decreasing function for all x. Um, greater than some n. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to say, I'm going to do an example. Say n equals 1 in, so in this example. And I also need to, like, just like the last slide, I forgot to tell you what a n is. So a n is, is f of n. And the reason why I can say for n equals 1 is because it doesn't matter if it's n equals 1 or n equals 5. I can always just discard the first five terms of the series, and it's not going to affect at all whether it converges or not. Okay, so well, let's make that look more like an N. Okay, so I'm going to draw a picture. And here is a, suppose here's my function, f of x. And I'm going to say that is 1, and then let me break these things up into pieces. Let's say this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. Now, notice, I'm going to do, I'm going to approximate the area of the curve by Riemann sums. I'm going to first do the upper Riemann sums. And notice, what do you notice here? That the area under the curve is, at le is, at, is no bigger than the area of these blue boxes. So in other words, the area, so the area under the curve from 1 up to infinity of f of x is no is no bigger than this. Oh, well, let me tell you what, what the area of the boxes are. Each box has, clearly has height one, so width one, and the height well, the height of this is this is f of one, which is a one. This height has is f of two, which is a two. This height has f this height f three of 3, which is a3. 
this has height f of 4, which is a4, and, and so forth. So the area of the blue boxes is just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n. And now let's look at, I'm going to draw some lower Riemann sums. So the lower sums are going to look like, like this. So I'm drawing this in red. And now you can see that the area, so the area of the red boxes, um, so this is height a2, this is height a3, this is height a4, etc. That's the same thing, except I just don't, I don't, I start at n equals 2 instead of n equals 1. So the height of, so the area of these red boxes is n equals 2 to infinity of a n. Okay, so now let's look at the integral test. Again, the integral test says the sum converges if and only if the integral converges. So in other words, if the sum converges, the integral converges. Let's look at this. Let's look at this equation right here. If the sum converges, that means this converges and this converges and they squeeze to these things um, in the these things both have to be finite, and this thing is is squeezed between those two, so that better be finite as well. Conversely, let's suppose the integral converges. The integral converges, so th this area is is finite. Then we know that well, we don't necessarily know this is finite, but we know that is finite, obviously. And this is just this thing plus a single term, a1, so that's going to be finite as well. Okay, and, and that's, that's why the integral test works. It's all from a picture. Let's apply the integral test to the harmonic series. So it is natural to let f of x be equal to 1 over x. And notice this works because f of n is 1 over n, and that is exactly what a n is. So notice also that this f of x is decreasing for all x greater than or equal to 1. And if you want to, you can take the derivative and notice that it's going to be negative, or you can just you know, plot 1 over x. This is something that, this is a function you should know what it looks like, 1 over 1 over x. Well, that, that's supposed to go down like that. Okay, so let's, let's apply the integral test. So let's compute the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Now, I want to say this is just the natural log of x evaluated at 1. So you know, what, you know, what I want to say is that this is the natural log of, of the um, absolute value of x. I can just say x because we're dealing with positive numbers from 1 to infinity. And that's going to be equal to infinity. I mean, that's, that's what I want to say, and honestly, when you get into a later math course, that's perfectly fine to say that. Because plugging in infinity, you know, we know we can fudge things a little bit. But since we just learned what improper integrals are, let me be formal, and let me, and let me say that this integral is actually the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. So now I can say this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of x, and I'm suppressing the absolute value signs because everything's positive, from 1 to b. And now that, that is the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b minus the natural log of 1, which of course is, is 0. So this term here, of course, is is infinity. So by the integral test, thus our harmonic series diverges. Okay. The last topic of the lecture is that of P series. And a P series is just a series of the following form. So there's one over n to, to the P, and here P is a fixed number and n is what is changing. So before I do some examples, I want to uh, compare this t 
to that of the geometric series. So recall a geometric series. That is is a series of the following form. Um, it's a number raised, what do we call the number? I, um, I think it was r, yeah, r to the n, something like that. So here r was fixed and n is changing and here's the other way around. The exponent is fixed and and n is changing. So the first example, notice that the harmonic series, uh, so this, this, this first one, this is the harmonic series. And this, and this, this is a P series. It's a P series where P equals one. Now the second one, this um, sum of the inverse squares. This is a P series where P equals two. And it, and it turns out that this this sum here, it's not at all obvious, is equal to pi squared over six. And I don't know any way to do this outside of using Fourier series, which is a topic that is either touched in, touch on in the last part of differential equations or in maybe a, a 400 level advanced engineering mathematics course. There might be other ways, but this is, it's, I don't think anybody would have guessed that this sum is actually equal to pi squared over six. Um, so this, this last one is, is a p-series for, um, let me see, yeah, this, this is um, p equals one-third. And let me note, um, let me just comment that even if you have a series, so I'm going to add a, a fourth example. So even if you have a series that it may not look like a p-series, but let's, let me take this one. Let's take n to the one-third. So at first glance, it doesn't look like to have the form, but just notice that this, of course, is a p-series because you can invert that, and you can t say this is equal to one over n to the one-third, and so now into you know, the negative one-third, and so now p equals negative one-third. Okay, so there's a theorem I left a blank. So I will want to give you a chance to see if you can figure out um, what it says. So I'll start it off and see if you can complete it. So the P series, n, equal, n equals 1 to infinity, n to the P converges, converges if something holds and it diverges um, if what do you think? So it turns out that it converges if P is greater than 1 and it diverges if P is less than or equal to 1. So the harmonic series is like right on the border. That's where P equals 1. It diverges but anything any series that's where p is smaller than that, it's still it's, the series is going to be even bigger still, and it will still diverge. And any and even the slightest bit larger for p is going to make the series converge. And um, how, so, how do you prove something like this? Um, let me see. It's just the integral. It, it's just the integral test. So the proof uses. The, the integral test. And I, and I encourage you to do this on your own. I'm not going to do it for you, but um, all you have to do is you just have to, all you have to do is, is integrate 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p d, dx, or which is the same as the integral of x to the negative p dx. Do that integral, and th this theorem should fall should fall right out.